Welcome back, SPC listeners. Back to a cockpit audio episode this week. But you may be asking what it's going to be since I finished my primary training episodes. Well, this is an Oshkosh departure, and next week we'll do an arrival. And yes, in that order. More explanation when we get started. But I hope you enjoy. Chandler Tower, Cherokee 4121 Tango, is at Chandler Air Service. We have Sulu, and uh, we'd like a south departure, please. Okay, so as I said, this week's episode is an in-cockpit ride from and to AirVenture, but there's a catch. This is AirVenture 2008, so we're going to go back in history a little bit, but follow me along. But before we do that, we'll do a little housekeeping. First of all, I apologize, I'm a day late on this episode, uh, but I've been down with illness, so I wasn't even really able to talk uh, for the last few days, so my voice is probably still sounding a little weird, uh, but I did have to postpone recording this because of my illness, so I apologize for being a day late. Uh, It hasn't been happening very often, but uh, um, hopefully it won't happen very often in the future either. And you also may be wondering what will happen with the podcast now that I've finally finished all my primary training episodes. Well, I've got some things coming, some things in the works. Um, So while I don't have a completely solidified plan as of yet, but I do know that I'll be staying focused on the student pilot, however that may work out. I've got several types of episodes that I'm working on, including interviews and training, but it's taking a bit of time to see what I can work out. But I've got plenty of older material, too, as I continue to try to learn to be a competent and safe pilot. So I've got some pretty interesting adventures in store from when I first got my license. But I also transitioned to a couple of different types of airplanes within a month or two of finishing. So I was back in the plane with a different instructor doing that transition training when I joined a local club. So as is normal for pilots, I had more training flights and more to share with you. So not to worry, we have some hopefully interesting stuff coming up, but before we hit that, I'll share some more informal training. I got the week I got my private pilot certificate, and it was all about Oshkosh. So as I've explained in other episodes, I barely finished my check ride before I had to jump on a big plane where I wasn't looking out the front window and headed to Milwaukee. It would be my first trip to AirVenture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So one of the hosts of the pilot cast, Kent Shook, had kindly offered to take me under his wing, his very capable wing, and give me the full experience my first time. Kent was, and is even more now, a serious Oshkosh veteran. He lives not too far away, and I'm not sure how long it's been since he's missed one. Who knows, maybe never. So I had a good teacher for my first one. I would fly into MKE, get a hotel near another local airport called Timmerman or KMWC for that one night. And then the next morning, Kent would leave Oshkosh in his 182, pick me up at Timmerman, and then fly me back to Osh using the Fisk VFR arrival. So this is definitely doing Oshkosh right. Here I was, a very newly minted pilot, the previous day, in fact, heading into Oshkosh the best way there is. Living the dream, baby. So let me set the timeline. I passed my check ride on Monday, the same day AirVenture started officially, in the afternoon, and I immediately jumped on a plane that evening to go to Milwaukee. And then the next morning, I flew into Osh with Kent. Unfortunately, I either didn't record that flight or I've somehow lost it. But later in the week, we went to go pick up another new friend of mine and someone Kent had known for a while at another nearby airport. So I got to do the departure, picked up Troy, and then another arrival. Cool, right? So that's the audio I'll share today. The departure from Oshkosh and the arrival into Timmerman in Milwaukee. I know it's from a long time ago, but many people have never gotten to fly into Oshkosh, so it should still be pretty fun. I'll make it quick too. I'll cut out a lot of it, but the cool thing is I was a complete newbie 
So Kent was explaining things to me. So now you get to hear him explain it to you. I would fly myself into Osh in a couple of years after this, all the way from Arizona, but that's a story for another time and place. For today's episode, I'll take you with us, leaving Osh and picking up a friend. Hope you enjoy. So we'll start here as usual getting the ATIS, which is a little different than you've heard before, as you can imagine. And then as we're taxing, Kent is explaining some of what we'd be doing. I was tasked with managing the multiple page NOTAM to make sure we didn't miss anything. So I was trying to stay on the right page and learn as much as I could. And listen to how busy it is and how good these controllers are. Notice also that for the most part, the pilots don't transmit on the radio. Just listen and act. You'll hear us comment that there was someone coming in on final, but the controller said, let's go, put us on the runway and got us out of there. Amazing. Have a listen. All right, you've got... Hi, departure information, Quebec. Time 1353 Zulu. Wind 0, left 3, is Delhi 10. Back condition clear. Temperature 24, 2.18. Altimeter 293. Runway 27 and runway 36 left in use. AFR departures follow the direction of the AFR segmented departure runway. Do not call ground control for taxi. A fire aircraft departing runway 27, Montreal FAA control is on frequency 121.75 for departure instructions. A fire aircraft departing runway 36 left, Montreal FAA control is on frequency 118.9 for departure instructions. A fire aircraft with departure reservation, contact clearance delivery frequency 119.05 for clearance and approval for any start no earlier than 30 minutes prior to estimated time of departure. Do not start taxiing without approval. Ensure an IFR card is placed in the windshield before taxi. Advise on initial contact you have, Quebec. All right. Oh, it's on. Section Section Wait a minute, Jim. Who do you call for taxi? Roger. No. Position and halt. Just start taxiing. Yep. Basically, what we do here is uh, now, right side of runway one two seven position hold. Detail Bonanza, left side of runway position hold. Malum is going to wheel before you. Roger. Uh, you can hear that we're using both sides of the runway, so it must be quite a few departures. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Now, if you look at the little map on the next page there, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. What we're going to do, you don't call anybody for taxi because, again, that would be a frequency full of crap. Um, only IFRs call for anything prior to takeoff. You know, they get their clearances. Um, but basically what we do is we just taxi out to the runway that they're using or, you know, whichever of the two, it sounded like they were using 3.6 and 2.7. 2.7 right here, so we'll, we'll use that. But we basically just, uh... Number 506, my runway heading clear for takeoff, maintain 3,000. Crum at 9 0 Tango, runway uh, 2.7, position hold, right side of runway. Clint on the other side, position hold, left side of runway, you'll be all right. Sidestep left of the runway, you got traffic overhead on the go around. Sidestep left of the runway for the southern. Oh, yeah, sounds like all kinds Sizer of fun here. Yeah, look at that. The traffic uh, in the downwind runway heading contact departure. Roger. Charlie Victor, oh. cleared for takeoff. We just taxi to the runway. Uh, they're on the other side. The, you know, uh, at some place uh, they'll be left regular the like Civil Air Patrol flagmen. They're the ones, of course, wearing the orange vests and stuff. Right. The. Uh, the FAA controllers, as you know, are wearing the, the pink shirts. So you can tell who's a controller and who's not, and you know, they can really send you across that run right there. So basically, what they're going to do is uh, they have these little things they call MOOC house, which is like mobile operating and command workstation or something like that. So, um, oh, what the heck? Well, as soon as you break around, left hit to the right. Oh, he is kind of, it's kind of hard to tell which way he's facing. I thought he was, like, going to do some kind of other funky go around again. Um, so, when we get to the runway, uh, they're basically, you can hear they're clearing a lot of people on the radio. They can also just do it by hand signals. <laughs> okay. But, seems like normally what they're doing is they're, uh, the guys down here are calling tail numbers up to the tower. And so they'll probably just say 271 golf play for takeoff. Um, and these guys down here might have a position on one side or the other of the runway, and then they, they shoot 
departures off both sides of the runway. So as far as the takeoff goes, if you look at that little map in the notum there, uh, taking off from 27, we need to be either uh, basically uh, next page. We're going to be coming off here, so basically we're going to have to fly from 270 to 360, so anywhere in that northwest quadrant, and we have to stay below 1300 until we're out of the Class D. And the reason for that is the uh, arrivals are going to be coming right in over the top of us. Right. So, ground level is 800, we're going to be coming out at 1300, the arrivals are coming in at 1800. The airspace is really, I mean, the, it's fits together like a puzzle. Like one of every one little two piece of this Position hold right side, one of our bravo. That doesn't look too bad. Right on the south side of the uh, red stripe, position hold left side of runway. 21 November bravo, uh, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, one November bravo. That's on the left side of runway, just pull it up a little bit please. Traffic just turned off short. Awesome job. Two zero two, zero two Romeo, clear for takeoff. <laughs> Had a little accolades there. Yep. Yeah, the controllers here are awesome. Actually, on the curve here is about the perfect place to do the up because we're not going to blow anyone out of here. Cherokee, south side of runway, runway 27 position, hold left side of runway. So number four, Romeo Lima, right side of runway position, and hold. And the Cherokee can pull up in front of the uh, the high wing, you're first. Cherokee, pull up. All right, lights mm -hmm. are on, transponder, we're leaving on standby within 30. Cherokee clear for takeoff, blue and white. Cherokee clear for takeoff. As he and the up and the position hold left side of runway. Did you say? Took him a second there. They didn't use his tail number. So they, they haven't. Uh, they haven't limit clear for takeoff. Remo channel guys, hold was, right side of runway. There was one. <laughs> Yeah, they're definitely trying to get some people out of here. There's a lot of line on the other side. So. Number 600, Delta, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Yeah, there's a tail number right there. Line of two, position and home. Speed's alive. 
gauges are green. Those wheels shimmy in, and we're out of here. Uh, kind of bumpy down here. Feels good. Makes me feel at home. <laughs> So we were well on our way. I'll let a little more of this play out here as we left the Oshkosh area, and you'll hear them clear a T6 behind us to take off. That's Oshkosh for you. You never know what you're going to see or hear. Just look at this stream of airplanes in front of us here. <laughs> these guys if you can kind of look for others watch and make sure there's one actually pop at runway 27 position hold left side of runway well, the railroad yeah, tracks are right runway here runway so position hold. the arrivals come right here over the top it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of people coming in right now though hooray in front of us is following the departure procedure begins. <laughs> I can see a Cessna on the arrival right there. Are uh, you looking for on guard? Yep. I know this guy 
should be able to see some uh, fluorescent orange arrows on the tracks. Bingo, Victor, X-ray, get squawk. They, they, Zero, three. These railroad four, tracks are supposed to follow on the arrival. They, they put... Uh, Oh. <laughs> they put those fluorescent orange arrows on it so you're really sure you're following the right tracks. There's another arrival. Uh, oh, yeah. When you, oh, yeah. When you said uh, fluorescent orange arrows, I thought you meant the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know anyone who's flying a fluorescent orange airplane anymore. Oh, this I gotta see. So we had a nice, smooth, non-eventful flight from there down to Timmerman, which is where Kent had picked me up also. I was enjoying some nice, cool air up at 5,500 feet, and I almost fell asleep. I wasn't getting a ton of sleep every night with the excitement of Oshkosh, not to mention we were sleeping in tents under the wing of the plane in the North 40, which isn't the most comfortable. Oh, and Kent was more of a night owl than I was, and that's saying something. And that summer sun would wake us up early as it heated up the tent pretty fast. In any case, I did stay awake, mostly, and in a few minutes, we were getting ready to head into Timmerman. Kent called up the Unicom to let the FBO know that we needed some fuel and were picking up a passenger, then got the ATIS, and on in we went. We'll pick it up there and take it down through the landing at Timmerman. Milwaukee Approach, Tower, ATIS. I'm uh, actually going to... seven. All arrivals contact Tower 120.5, at least five miles from the airport. Hey, Grand Air Timmerman, Skyline 271 Golf. This is Grand Air, go ahead. Uh, 271 Golf will be down about one zero minutes. Uh, I'd like to get uh, 10 gallons of fuel and we're picking up a faster. Okay, 27 Golf, uh, and is it 100 Lola that you need? Hey, affirmative. Hi, Edie. Hi. <laughs> okay, we'll see you when you get in. We'll see you. All right, let's get Could you write? All departures contact ground control 121.7. All arrivals contact tower 120.5, at least five miles from the airport. Advise initial contact, give information. Charlie, all right. Airport information, Charlie, time 14450, wind 340 at 4, visibility 10, 4700 scattered, temperature 28, 2.19, altimeter 29 or 83, expect visual approach from A22 right, all departures contact ground control 121.7, all arrivals contact tower 120.5 at least 5 miles from the airport. Advise initial contact, give information, Charlie. Troy has his camera out, he's gonna have an easy shot of us landing. <laughs> two to right is the, the runway where the threshold is like right at the edge of the ramp there. Oh. <laughs> Air Shuttle 7234, flight in 180, maintain 10,000. Air Shuttle 7324, yes, that's uh, heading 180 and 10,000, 10, We're gonna have to come down fairly quick here after we... A good vertical profile would've put us right through these clouds right here, so... Yeah, no problem. We're all pilots here. Yeah. You know, I'm not even gonna bother calling approach, we're so close. All power in like two seconds anyway. So, let's see, we had an engine failure. One nice thing about this plane is that when you pull the power, basically just end up taking the trim wheel all the way to the Back stop. Down best glide? Perfect. And then it'll just, I mean. What's best glide? 80. 80. Well, and it'll stay rock solid on that 80. Nice. And we're only going to 
thing. <laughs> we, we wouldn't make it all the way there from here, but... Pretty darn close. There's a split, and in fact, I see the field already. Where the highway splits right there, and yep. there's a, a green yep. opening, that's it. Oh, okay. We're getting a pretty good tailwind, so if I actually hold back just a slight little bit, I ain't actually improve our, our ratio just a hair. Yeah, see, now I should be able to uh, just about make it from here. We're definitely coming down. Now we're getting 800 feet per minute at about 75 miles an hour. That's a short field touchdown speed on. Hang on one second, we call tower. Yeah, turn on the tower, Skyline 271, Alpha 7 miles northwest, landing with Charlie. Skyline 271, Alpha 7, it's on to my clear land. Clear land, 2 2 right, 271, go. Oh, they must not be all that busy today. Oh, <laughs> that was easy. West Jeff 493 on uh, guard. That yeah, we would come up just short. <laughs> airplane is it's that big old cow. Yeah. yeah. Of course, as soon as it put the power in, it wants to just keep nosing up. Oh. All right. Gas on both. Undercarriage is down and welded. Mixture and prop are full forward. Which is seat belts. There's like a, a cloud that's putting a shadow right over the hangars, nothing else. <laughs> I took my shoulder harness off. And not required crew, but I do want to live in case something happens. Yep. In five six uniform back with crew. On the brakes. Now you get those flaps out, this thing really does glide you like a brick. <laughs> yeah. Roll. Nicely done. That's a little better than the. Hi, right, taxi parking with you, 7 one Golf. So that was our departure flight from Oshkosh. It was super interesting for me to see how that went. As I said, I had already done an arrival with Kent a few days before, but now I got to experience a departure as well. Kent was an excellent guide, so I hope you enjoyed it too. If you want to contact me, my email address is bill at studentpilotcast.com, or you can reach me on the website contact form at studentpilotcast.com. On Twitter, I'm at Bill Will. That's Bravo India Lima Lima, Whiskey India Lima. I know I released an episode or maybe even two from that first Oshkosh. I was overwhelmed with new friends, listeners of the podcast, all things aviation, and planes everywhere. I was even camping in the North 40 on my very first trip there, thanks to Kent. I was exhausted and having the time of my life. I'm glad I got to share this little bit of my history in aviation with you and all that learning I was continuing to do after I got my license. I guess we're all students all the time. Every experience counts. We'll pick up the flight back back into Oshkosh next week, and we'll do the Fisk arrival. Thanks for listening.
The music for today's episode is To Be an Angel by the Canadian band Uncle Seth. You can get more information and subscribe to the podcast feeds on the web at studentpilotcast.com. Remember, any instruction that you hear in this podcast was meant for me and for me alone in the situation I was in at the time. Please do not try to blindly apply anything you see or hear in this podcast to your own flying without thinking it through on your own completely. If you have questions about any aspect of your flying, please consult a qualified CFI.